Welcome to Film Right Mondays. I'm incredibly excited. Josh, ask me why. Boobs! You're useless. Because in two days, we release our first short for our Bloodtober event, which is kind of a bloodless Bloodtober event, if I'm being honest. Which we call it Bloodtober, but it's not because it's bloody. It's our Halloween celebration, basically. Uh, so we have two horror comedy short films coming out. Don't expect a ton of blood, or really any for that matter. But I am really excited for what we've put together. I think you guys are really going to dig it. So in two days, it's happening. Two day. No, not two day. Two, in two, two days. Day. No, in two. Coming out. On the 12th. Two day. Two days. Two, two days. Two day. In two days. Coming out today. First question, what usually happens to a short film when they get accepted to film festivals? Do they get a distribution deal or just drift into obscurity and never get seen again? To be honest, from my experience, from what I've seen, uh, the majority slip into obscurity never to be heard from again. Uh, but I mean, if you think about it, the amount of films that are made yearly versus the amount that find an audience, it's a pretty big divide there. And that's just because there's a lot of noise out there now. There's a lot of people trying to make films and it's hard to find that marketing, uh, that market in the marketplace. It's, uh, there, it's really like a formula that needs to line up very well to, to be able to garner an audience and make that successful. It's why I always say it's like one of the hardest industries to be successful at. So if you're not insanely passionate, you might as well not do it. I mean, even me, I haven't made a feature yet. We're working toward that, working hard towards that, and I'll never stop working towards that. And that's the attitude you need to have that you'll never give up. You'll always work toward that thing. But there, I'm, I'm you know, realistic too. There is a possibility that that would never happen for me. I mean, eventually I'll make a feature, but maybe it'll just be on my own with no money and it will never have that big of an audience. That's a possibility. But I'll always be working towards that end goal of making features for a mass audience. And along that way, I'll I'll make my short films and I'll keep practicing and keep trying to get better and refine my craft and be happy and fulfilled within that uh, because I'm still doing what I'm passionate about but always pushing toward that ultimate goal so that should be what you should be thinking about is just trying absolutely everything don't put all your eggs in one basket uh, I know it sounds like what you're asking me is you have a feature you want to put it into festivals and you think you might get a distribution deal the odds of that are slim but that shouldn't stop you you should always be pushing toward uh, that dream, that goal. I'm a budding teen filmmaker and I was wondering if you guys had any tips on how teens can find adult actors more easily. That is so tough. At least it was tough for me. Um, I went to a youth group when I was younger, so a lot of the people there would help me out. Uh, my parents were in some of my short films. Uh, one of my uncles helped out at one point. If you have friends, you can see if their parents would be willing to help out. Um, that's the easiest way to do it. I mean, if you're in a school, there's a lot, a lot of places there. Your teachers, um, maybe parents there, you could put it out on boards. Or if you have a demo reel of stuff that you've done that's pretty competent, you could always go to local acting schools, show them your demo reel, what you do, what you're trying to do, and see if they'll help you cast it, find some people to help you actually do it. And then maybe even lock in with somebody who would be down to help you produce it that's a bit older so you can find that age balance. How do you handle data managing on set? In my latest short, we spent hours with down downloading the backups of footage. We even use multiple cards along the day. We just have a laptop on set with two hard drives, one uh, the main and the other the backup, and then we have enough cards with the camera so that somebody can be going back and forth delivering cards that are now formatted that we can just pop in and keep shooting while taking the other card and then offloading that card while we're, while we're still shooting. The trick is to just make sure you have a fast enough computer with fast enough connections that that's not gonna get too slowed down for you. Do you need permits or express written consent to film in a rental house? Notice you guys film a lot of Bloodtober in rental houses what was the process behind that yes you absolutely need uh permission to shoot it at other people's locations otherwise you'd just be breaking and entering so we shot at two different locations both owned by people that were not us or people that we even knew so we were paying to rent those places out for a period of time so there were contracts involved but whenever you shoot on a location even when you get permission you always want to get that uh written down you want to get that in writing to where you have legal permission to be there uh, we've talked about it on the show before that we were almost sued by a place that was very shocking that would be potentially suing us because although they gave us verbal permission, we didn't get that permission in writing because I trusted the place that we were shooting at and we made that mistake, which I will never make again, to trust somebody that we thought was trustworthy. So they tried to sue us after the fact to get our video taken down, but luckily we, uh, you know, 
I had a paper trail already and we did uh, all the smart things other than getting that final written permission. So we didn't have to take it down and we also did not get sued. Uh, but you know, there's crappy people out there. Even when you think they're gonna be of the highest standard, you never know. So always make sure you're protecting yourself. Always make sure you're getting things in writing. Why is there an oversaturation of action and dramatic short films and almost no comedic ones? I think that might be more of a perspective thing because for me, I come across a lot more comedic short films than I do anything else, especially what's sent to me. I get sent more comedic shorts than I get sent to anything for sure. But then if you go on like Vimeo, you get a lot more of the festival styled stuff. So it's a lot more serious. Uh, there's tons of sci-fi short films online. Definitely a lot of action, but people make what they're interested in making. Action's a lot of fun to make, but I don't think there's one more than the other. It might just be where you find yourself looking. Last question, how about procrastination? How do you overcome it and how to avoid it in the future? Right. Hmm. Get it? I'm procrastinating. Oh my God. <laughs> right? No. Visual Stop. learning. I was really stupid. Learn by doing. I think we've talked about this before. We've, we've answered so many questions, I don't even know what we've answered anymore. But basically, deadlines. The answer is deadlines. Give yourself deadlines, announce it if you have to so people are holding you accountable, and then you don't have a choice. Uh, so I procrastinate a lot. It is very, I think especially for creative-minded people, it's very difficult not to procrastinate. Okay, so, I'm gonna throw something in. Yeah. I'm gonna throw something. Uh-huh. Cause now, cause this has Are to be interesting. Are we procrastinating right now? No. Okay. Creativity, mm. in the world of creativity. We're in the world. Procrastination. Yes. Is kind of healthy sometimes. Yes. But in like moderation. <clears throat> well, that's what we call couch time. People call it procrastination, but it's not your thinking. Yeah. You're developing your ideas. So I'm laying, I'm not always on a couch, but I might just be sitting there doing nothing, staring into the abyss, and it seems like procrastination, but it's not, I'm working out the next idea. Sometimes you gotta let your mind wander so you can pluck those great ideas out of the great unknown and bring them into your realm. <laughs> If you're a filmmaker, entrepreneur, innovator of any kind, domain.com is a place to go when that next idea hits you. I know you've heard me say a ton that the available list of domain extensions is growing, but you now have the opportunity to build your brand and name your site in ways that was never before possible before. You can choose from a growing list of 400 plus domain names like .com, .club, .org, or .net, and they're giving you 25% off their already affordable prices when you use the coupon code FILMRIOT at checkout with your web hosting, email, and whatnot. So just use the coupon code FILMRIOT, and when you think domain names, think domain.com. So that's it for today, which means it's time for my suggestion of the week. This comes from the same people who made the documentary on the making of Blade Runner. I don't know when they released these. It was definitely a while ago, but they're really great. This one is Alien Evolution. It is obviously on the making of Alien. Really great interviews and a lot of behind the scenes info, so definitely check that out. And don't forget that in two days, we're releasing our first short in the Bloodtober event, and we're gonna have some massive giveaways, so make sure you're paying attention to all that so you don't miss out. Till next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.